Welcome to Chaos to Clarity. I'm Bernie Reno. You can uh, follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm at AccuRaino. Back on Friday, October 25th, I said, look out in the Caribbean. We're going to have a name storm. I was convinced of it. We had a high risk out for it. It's all pattern recognition. I don't worry about modeling uh, as far as if they show it or not. I use the model as, as their attended, as tools. And what, what did we tell you? We'd have a frontal boundary that would come down um, across the Caribbean. You always look south. You get an area of showers and thunderstorms. And once the shear weakened, which we suspected would be either late last week or over the upcoming weekend, we get this to form. And there it is, Tropical Depression. It was named 10 o'clock Eastern time on Monday morning. I'm taping this in the afternoon. It's still a tropical depression, but this will be a tropical storm. Uh, this will be a tropical storm. I, I think by the end of today, at least it'll be a tropical storm. Let me show you the um, water vapor loop here. And um, here's the thing. This upper low, and you can see it right in here, south of Cuba, you could see the spin. You see this? This is our upper low. This is what's been producing the dry air denoted by the yellow shading. And it's also producing west-southwest, a lot of westerly wind shear. That was, the, that was uh, prevalent over the weekend. That's why we didn't get any development. But as the modeling showed, and we use modeling as tools, what they were designed to, you can get a good beat on this. It, it showed that the shear would weaken beginning Sunday, but especially Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and, and, and it's already beginning the weekend. Let me show you our uh, shear product here. Um, there it is. The dark purple, by the way, is where we have uh, wind shear, right? The light purple is where you don't, and there, there's a little pocket of wind shear near Jamaica, uh, out here, it doesn't matter because that's not where the system's going. It is going in this direction. And already, most of the Central and Western Caribbean have light wind shear. And that wind shear is going to continue to lessen. Let me let me show you uh, the shear product here, and um, we can show you what this looks like here. <clears throat> this is uh, just simple, 200 millibar. That's all I look at. I have another shear product. I'll show you that in a second. But you can see, as I tape this, uh, this is located in here. It's in a better spot. You know, you can kind of see the outline of high pressure aloft. There's a little wind shear, but it's just going to continue to weaken here. Let's go to um, let's go to tonight, and again, watch this area. Not much wind shear. It's lessening in here. It's coming in out of the south, and it's moving with it, and it's light. So that that is ideal for development. Then we get in the uh, Tuesday. Uh, where's the system located? According to the modeling, right near Jamaica. So tomorrow morning, it's right in here. And there's virtually, again, light wind shear. You can see the area of high pressure aloft. That's going to allow for uh, for good ventilation. This system is going to start to strengthening. Let's go to, this is Tuesday afternoon. This is Tuesday evening. Where's the system? Um, right in here. I don't see much wind shear again. What do you see? Area of high pressure, good ventilation. So this system's going to go, and it's going to go to a hurricane. The question is, can it get to a major hurricane? I don't think a major hurricane. That's of at least 111 miles per hour, Cat 3. I, I can see Category 2, though. We'll see. But <clears throat> certainly from a wind spur perspective, there's not much. And then you could see the modeling. This is the American model. This is Wednesday um, this is Wednesday morning on southern tip of Cuba. What does the modeling look like? Wind shear, not much. The wind shear is up in here. Uh, it, it's roughly the longitude of about Fort Myers. So north of this line, that's kind of where the wind shear is. South of this line, there's less wind shear. So here it is now to about here, this whole length in here, you have a lowering wind shear. So as it goes through this path, it has a wind to develop right through Thursday. At least through Wednesday night, it has, it has time to develop. And then a, a, as we get into Thursday and especially Friday, you start picking up this wind shear. Now, again, I, uh, what does concern me a little bit is at 200 millibars, there's less wind shear down here, even Friday. And by Friday, where is this? You know, supposedly it's, it's up in here. But um, again, I think a, a rule of thumb is south of the longitude of Fort Myers, positive <clears throat> wind shear allowing it to develop. North of this line, it gets in the wind shear. Keep in mind that it's going to be moving in this direction. <clears throat> Excuse me. Eventually, by Thursday and Friday, this is going to start getting affected by west-southwest wind shear. And then 
it will start the weekend. And while I am expecting a landfalling storm along the central Gulf Coast states or the panhandle of Florida, I don't think it'll be at a hurricane. I think it'll be a weakening tropical system, tropical storm as it makes landfall at some point on Saturday. That's the time frame on it. But you can clearly see there's less wind shear, again, from where it is now, south of Jamaica, to, let's say, the longitude or latitude, I'm sorry, of Fort Lauderdale. From this area in here, it's going to be able to, to not only maintain its strength, but develop and then maintain its strength. So it'll be a hurricane. It'll be the 11th hurricane of the season. Now, the question is, is where is it going? Let me show you that. Um, let me show you the upper air. And I'm going to show you the American model and also the European model. Let's go full on this. So let's go to Wednesday morning. This is the American model. And this, by the way, is Raphael, when it gets named, Wednesday morning. There's the European. Not much difference here. See? Pretty much the same area. Also, what to concentrate on, you have a high-pressure system here, here off the East Coast, and this is the trough to the west. So these are the steering mechanisms for Raphael. So this is Wednesday morning. Here it is. Uh, this is the Thursday morning, American, European, American, European. Not much change, although you can see the European already has this weakening. I think that's a little too fast. I think that's too fast for weakening. As I mentioned, I, I, I think that it... it, it it will maintain its strength at the very least, you know, Thursday. It, it, it's got to get to the to the uh, latitude here of about Fort Myers before it starts reaching the wind shear. So I don't believe the European on right. And, and then I really don't believe the European on this. Watch what it does. You want to see it, it? It just takes that area. Watch what it does. This is the European. It, it, it just takes it due west and then weakens it. I don't believe that. I, I, and here's why, because I, I think this system will be under the influence of the upper high. Here it is. It's, uh, it's going to be on the western periphery of the high, so it's going to feel these west, these southeasterly winds. So this is going to continue to move to the west. It'll continue to move to the west-northwest until it feels the west-southwest winds from this trough. Then that will start to steer to the north and then to the northeast. And that's what I believe is going to happen. And, and the, the, the American model, it does somewhat show that. I, I'll have to show you the surface pattern. This is a lot. But you can see it turn toward the northeast on the American model. Watch it. You see that? And I think that's ultimately where it's going to go. It's going to end up turning to the right Thursday and Friday. L let me go back and, and I'll show you the surface pattern here. And this is the, your, this is the American model, the one that I favor. And again, you see how it's going north? It maintains its strength. It starts weakening once it gets to what? The latitude of about Fort Lauderdale. I, 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 I think this is right, but then there's going to be a curve. There's going to be a curve to the north and northeast as it feels these west-southwesterly steering flow, right? And then there it goes. And you could see the clear weakening on the American model. Watch, see? And then now it's trying to take it in toward Mississippi. The modeling, a lot of the modeling a couple days ago or even over the weekend, was trying to take this toward the Louisiana coast. I, 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 listen, I, I could see that, but listen, it's no farther west than central Louisiana, and then it's probably no farther east than the Big Bend. This is where I think it's going to make landfall, right in there, as we get into Saturday. And now, we'll weaken, and you can see the modeling showing that, and I think the modeling's right. See, see how it weakens? And I think that, it, I mean, it won't, it'll probably be a tropical storm when it makes landfall. And we're, we're talking about landfall at some point on Saturday. All right. But the, the area I like, I personally believe, is but no farther west than central Louisiana, no farther east than the Big Bend. I think it's somewhere in here. And we'll be able to zone in on that as we go forward here um, during the week. But that's where, uh, uh, that's where I think it's going to go. It's a very rare track, though. That's what concerns me. Let me let me show you. Here, here's our eye path, and um, right here, this is the AccuWeather eye path. And I and you know I was talking to forecasting uh, and also uh, Jonathan Porter about this as well, the chief. And I, I really believe, and we we kept this window open in Florida because we were worried about an eastern track. I don't believe there's going to be anything farther west than this. I, I think look for this to get cut out. And I, I personally believe that this is the area. And again, 
Let me show right in here. This is as far west as I can see it. I think it's going to end up between these two regions here uh, on Saturday, right there. And again, I, I think it takes a move to the west northwest, and it's going to feel that it's going to feel that trough. Now, maybe it's not an abrupt right turn, but I think it's going to go north and then northeast. So that's my thinking uh, uh, of this landfall. I mean, it's another name storm making landfall in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, I want to show you this, and just to show you how rare this track is, and I, I don't like going against historical tracks, because I've seen it time and time again, in the end, these tracks go toward history, but I, uh, you, you'll see there is some evidence of, of a track as far west as Louisiana. It's not, not all that great, but it does show it. Let me show you this. This is the tracks in November let me put this on full, of all storms in November, right in here. This track in the Louisiana, this was Juan in 1985. I, let, me, let me show you the Juan. You could see that track. All right, so this was Juan in 1985. It, it happened uh, October 26th to November 1st. So this barely made the cut, too. The, the, I mean... This barely made the cut. This was really an October system, so you know what? I would X that out because, um, yeah, it, uh, yeah, because let's see when did it make when did it make landfall here? It uh, it came up around made landfall right here. That was October 29th. All right, so we're gonna throw that out. All right, so if you take one out and you go back into these historical tracks. Where do they all go? And sorry about that. This you got to be careful not to hit anything. They all typically go in the Florida. See that? Florida's the landing spot. You do have Ida. Let's take a look at Ida. Um, let me turn this off. Ida was 2009, right here. That made landfall on the 10th as barely, a, I think it was a tropical depression, actually, or was it a tropical storm? Uh, ET, wind spot, nine, I mean, 40, it looks like it may have been a tropical storm as it made landfall in the 10th, and that made it just south of Mobile. So that was the, that was the one in 2009. The majority of them are in Florida. So what we're, what I'm telling you is a track from here to here. History says it's on the eastern side of my track. That's what history says. And I don't go, I like, I don't like going against history. History repeats itself a lot. So one other thing um, that, that's very interesting here, um, and I'm going to end with this. Let me go back to here. That um, this, if this makes landfall, by the way, as a tropical storm, which we're expecting it to, this will be the sixth landfall in the Gulf of Mexico this year. Barrel. Francine, both hurricanes. Uh, trop this was category one. This was a two. Uh, of course, Barrel was a five uh, when it uh, when it hit the lesser um, the Windward Islands, caused a lot of devastation. This is one. This was a two. Uh, Helene, I, I, I believe that was a four. Milton was a three, and then you had Debbie as a one. So you've had five hurricane hits. Five hurricane hits. In the Gulf of Mexico, I don't think you're going to be looking at a sixth hurricane hit, but you are going to have a sixth landfall in the Gulf of Mexico um, from what will be Rafael. So that's my thought on it. I I'll leave you with this uh, track uh, really quick here. Let me leave you with this track. There it is. So that's our track, and again... I, 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 this is as far west as I can see it. And I can see it as far east as here. Look for this, the modeling, and then from the NHE and others to start shifting this east. You can see all kinds of spaghetti plots, and you can see them going to the east, I bet. So I, that's why I think there's landfall. We'll zone in a little bit on it. But again, I mean, here we go. This is storm number 17. Um, I think that subtropical storm, unnamed subtropical storm, remember that made landfall north of Charleston that produced all the problems in Brunswick. I bet you that gets characterized as a subtropical storm when they take a look at the end of the season. That would be storm 18. 
May get another one, the 19. Will we get to 20? I don't know. But this hurricane season, while many were calling it a dud, and I wish it was a dud, no dud, this was a bad hurricane season already because of Helena Milton and just the other storms that have hit. Number and landfalls, and keep in mind, Raphael will be the 11th hurricane of the season. That's a lot of hurricanes. Yeah, it was supercharged. If you have any questions, you can follow me on uh, X, formerly known at Twitter. I'm at Accurano. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, other than that, uh, stay tuned. We'll keep you updated on what will be Raphael.